Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, I've got some great emulation news for you. We're talking about Xbox 360, Nintendo Switch, Nintendo 3DS, and the Steam Deck. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about Xbox 360 emulation on PC with Xenia. This is a pretty huge update. However, it's worth pointing out that this update isn't with the main version of Xenia, it's with Xenia Canary. For those that are unaware, Xenia Canary is a fork of the main version of Xenia, and it may or may not have some performance improvements incorporated into it. And for those that are unaware, Canary stands for subscribe to Mr. Sujano. Now these latest builds of Canary are definitely not messing around. This is huge. We're looking at performance improvements between 30 and 90%. Yes, you heard that correctly. This is a big one. Someone had Forza Horizon up and running at 23 frames a second before the update, and after the update, they're close to 50. And Snow Angel here on YouTube has Red Dead Redemption up and running at 60 frames a second, and it is looking great. I'll leave a link to this YouTube video in the description below, and I highly recommend checking it out. So if you want to check out the latest experimental build of Canary, I'll drop a link to this GitHub in the description below. But just remember here, it is experimental. Some things might not work as anticipated. On top of that, there's a bunch of different patches available for Canary, and if you want to learn more about that, I'll drop a link to their patches page in the description below as well. There's a full-blown tutorial here. Next up here, we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on PC with Yuzu and Yuzu just released their amazing progress report. Now we've covered a lot of these updates in previous videos and I'll be going over this at a fairly high level. If you want to check it out, and I highly recommend checking it out, I'll drop a link in the description below. This is well written. And I love to see this. Interestingly enough, the Skyline developers have helped out Yuzu. They say here, the awesome devs working on Skyline emulator finished implementing their NVIDIA driver service and offered it to the Yuzu team. It's much more accurate than their old implementation. Here is Yokai Watch up and running before, and well, there's after. The Yuzu team has also managed to fix Super Smash Bros. Ultimate's World of Light mode, Delta Rune, and several other games. We've got some bug fixes and several fixes for Vulcan. So Yuzu is not only looking better thanks to a bunch of work they put into their graphics engine, it's also sounding better, and that's thanks to Project Dandio which was basically an entire rewrite of their entire audio engine. Thanks to Project Andio, your game should sound better and it also opens the door for future reverse engineering. On top of that, the Yuzu team has also started preliminary work on Project London, or LDN. And that is local wireless support into Yuzu, including hosted rooms for online connectivity. They state this LDN implementation is based on Citra, which is absolutely no surprise. And also, while it's already perfectly functional, it won't be available for users until the network backend is ready. In addition to all of that, there were some CPU updates that made Yuzu more accurate and also booting faster. There were also some kernel updates that fixed some issues with Mario Strikers and also allowed Mononoke Slashdown to boot. And with some more Vulcan GPU fixes, Xenoblade Chronicles using Vulcan now boots and is playable. It doesn't just crash on boot. There is still some issues here. It's not perfect just yet, and they are improving it. On a side note here, I've got an NVIDIA GPU and I don't have an AMD one. If you've got an AMD GPU, let me know how Xenoblade Chronicles 3 works for you. Does it crash on boot or is it playable? If you're a Linux user and want to install Yuzu using Flatpak, they've fixed a few things here to make the experience better. There have also been improvements to the inputs, and this one is interesting. Uh, infrared cameras are now supported, so games like Game Builder Garage and Nintendo Labo are supported. In the latest builds of Yuzu, you can configure the camera by going to the Yuzu configuration menu, clicking on controls, then clicking on the advanced tab. You should see the option in there. If you're on the Steam Deck and we're having issues using external controllers, they should now be fixed. Yuzu now supports the online co-op mod for Super Mario Odyssey, so you can play it online co-op for up to 10 players. On top of all of that, there's been a bunch of other improvements and bug fixes, and this is worth pointing out. If you have an Intel GPU, a possibly older Intel GPU, you're not going to like this update. While this news won't affect you just yet, it probably will in the future. If the Yuzu team decides to make Vulcan improvements, which they most certainly will, it might break things with you because Intel is killing support for two-year-old hardware. 
If you have an Intel GPU and you have Linux, well, just try using the message drivers, you should be okay. If you have a Windows PC and you're using an Intel GPU and you're trying to use Vulkan, well, you're probably not going to have a good time in the future. Again, it's not going to happen for a while, but eventually, inevitably, it will. So July was a pretty huge month for Yuzu, and I can't wait to see what happens at the end of August. I mean, they've already made a number of big improvements, and they keep coming. The Yuzu team is crushing it. Next up here, we're talking about Nintendo 3DS emulation on Android with Citra just not the version of Citra that's available on the Google Play Store. We are talking about the fork of Citra designed for performance as opposed to emulation accuracy. It's free, it's open source, it's on GitHub, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. It's called Citra MMJ, where MMJ stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of information as to what exactly was updated, but it looks like here we've got some minor fixes to the input overlay and usually they sneak in some shader cache files or some other minor performance improvement. Citra MMJ has been very active lately. This release just came out and there's probably going to be another one in the near future. At least, I hope so. And speaking about the near future, last up here and definitely not least, if you've pre-ordered the Steam Deck and are waiting for one to be delivered, well, you might get an email sooner rather than later. They say here, hi all, just a quick note that starting with this morning's batch of the Steam Deck order invites, we've increased the number of emails we're sending out again. We're excited to get more of these into your hands. And pro tip here, order emails are sent out Monday and Thursday mornings, and I think that means specific time. So if you've ordered a Steam Deck and you're waiting on that magical email, check your inbox Monday evening and Thursday evening, and also check out your spam inboxes Monday and Thursday evenings. You may get an email, you may not. If you don't get it this week, check next week. And if you don't get it next week, check the week after and possibly the week after that too. While Steam Deck orders are speeding up, chances are you're still gonna be waiting a while to get one in your hands. I mean, there are a lot of people in line waiting for one of these things. Anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts on anything we talked about today in the comments below, and we did talk about quite a bit. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos, don't tempt fate, save your state.